ti hei mauri ora. Tēnā kūtau, tēnā tātau. Ki ngā mate huhua o te ao, kūtau haere atu ra. Haere atu kūtau ki tua te arai, ki tua te arai o ki o ki ai. Koe no ki ngā maunga whakahi o konei. Ki ngā iwi kāinga o te moana nei. Tāma ki makaurau, te waito matā, te haurake, te pohaki manuka. Me whakamihi atu ki a kūtau katika, nā kūtau tātou katoa i whati mai, nā tātou katoa i whati mai ki runga i a kūtau, i a kūtau i manaki, mai te taenga mai tuatahi a tainoa tainoa ki naini. Nā rere ki a tātou, katoa te motu e taka i ora nei, tēnā tātou katoa. When it comes to matters of our rapidly changing climate, it's fair to say that at last there's enough people with enough foresight to understand there's a big problem on our immediate horizon. It's also fair to say that thankfully, there's a groundswell of support in the corporate world, backed up with a range of initiatives, commitments and innovations, representing a promising start to reversing the damage done by the world's outdated technologies. But for all the promises and positive actions that are happening in the world today, there's still an enormous mountain to climb. What the world needs desperately is more people, and especially more businesses, stepping up to do their part. But where do we start? What can we do? Many simply don't know, but are hungry to learn. That's where we come in, because we've got just as much reason to make change happen. Everybody's talking about electric vehicles, but who's actually getting into them? Well, for a start, we are. At Contact, we're proud to be early adopters in converting our passenger and light vehicle fleet to EV and plug-in hybrid. 52% of them, in fact. One of our cars that regularly shuttles a 40k round trip to Topo Airport has saved us about $42,000 annually and reduced emissions by 82% compared to using a petrol rental. That's just one way we can make change happen. Topo's nature's flame lives up to its name. Sawmill waste is used to make the product sustainable and when they needed a new energy source to dry the wood fibres for their pellets, low carbon geothermal steam from Contact was the natural choice. It got nature's flame thinking of new business, like supplying Fonterra's Te Awamutu dairy factory when its boiler was converted from coal to wood pellets. Nature's Flame is now shipping pallets to Japan and South Korea, also making a contribution to reducing global emissions. Extra, there's also awesome heat source for right below our feet. That's another way we can make change happen. Contact has a really long history of geothermal in the Topo region, considered by many as the greenest energy source in Aotearoa. It is available 24-7 and it's both reliable and renewable. Contact expects that the initial Tohara project will be the equivalent of removing at least 130,000 cars from the road. And this provides an amazing opportunity for us to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels because fossil fuels are often used to fill in those gaps when the weather is not providing. Uh, that's certainly the case in New Zealand. The geothermal opportunity here at Tohara is the best developable geothermal opportunity that we have in New Zealand. Well, I'm very passionate about geothermal and I think it has enormous benefits and I'm proud of what we do. There are many, many people in the community that we would like to see benefit from geothermal development and we want to work in a really positive way with all of the people in the community to ensure that that happens. So where will we put our energy? Where it matters, where it will get the best results, where it will create the biggest change, where it benefits the most people, where it will benefit the planet. Because ultimately, that's all that's ever going to matter. In a mana, in a reho, in a karangatanga maha, tenakotu, tenakotu, tenakotu katoa. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Contact's annual shareholder meeting. My name is Rob McDonald, and I'm the chair of the Contact Board. On behalf of the Contact Board, and of all our people across New Zealand, I would like to welcome you to our 2020 annual shareholder meeting. It is the first to be held in a fully virtual format, a necessity given by the uncertainty of the COVID world. 
you can vote and ask questions online. I'll provide you with further instructions as we progress in the meeting. If you encounter any issues, please refer to the virtual annual meeting online portal guide, or you can phone the helpline on 0800 200 220. As a quorum is present and due notice of this meeting has been given, I declare the meeting duly constituted and open for business. I'd like, like to start by introducing my fellow directors with me today. We have Faimutu Jews, Eleanor Trout, Victoria Crone, Dame Therese Walsh, David Small and John McDonald. Members of the senior leadership team are also present at the meeting, as well as representatives from our auditors, KPMG. Today's meeting will commence with an address from me as chair and also from the chief executive, Mike Fuge. Following this, we will consider the financial statements and then move on to the resolutions that are outlined in the notice of meeting. We have three resolutions to put to the meeting today, and these resolutions will be decided by taking a poll. I would encourage you to send through your questions as soon as you can. This will allow us to answer these questions at the appropriate time of the meeting. To ask a question, click on the box that says, ask a question and follow the instructions on screen. You must register to vote before you can ask a question. Today I'd like to share some brief observations about contact energy, the industry, and the context, context in which the company is operating, and then look down the track to what lies ahead as we pursue our vision to help build a better New Zealand. After the resignation of Dennis Barnes as CEO in June 2019, Mike Fuge arrived in February 2020 to begin a new chapter of leadership for contact. Mike joined us from Refining New Zealand, armed with a strong history in the energy sector in New Zealand and overseas, including as CEO of Pacific Hydro in Australia and as Chief Operating Officer at Genesis Energy. Mike has demonstrated his passion for renewable energy and has relished the challenges and opportunities that have come his way over the past nine months. Just weeks after his commencement, the COVID-19 pan pandemic response began and his focus and energy turned to crisis management and doing right by contacts customers, staff and broader New Zealand. It has been and continues to be an extraordinary time. Contact fully supported the actions of the New Zealand government in restricting the spread of COVID-19. A lot of work was done to ensure we actively reduced the risk of the virus spreading and made sure our people across New Zealand were safe as possible. More change and challenges were to come soon after the pandemic lockdown with the closure of the TY smelter announced following the conclusion of the Rio Tinto strategic review. Citing high energy costs and a challenging outlook for the aluminium industry, NZAS gave notice to terminate the power supply in August 2021. We have made no secret of our view that the people of Southland, New Zealand Inc, and a stable path for renewable energy investment is best served by NZAS remaining operational in the medium term, ideally for at least the next five years. We remain hopeful that a deal will soon be struck given the goodwill from all sides that emerged in the lead-in to the election. More recently, the board has been working with Mike and the leadership team on contact strategy and reflecting on the future shape of the company, the sector, and the country in the world in a world of COVID-19 and potentially no TY smelter in the short or medium term. There is uncertainty, but within this lies plenty of opportunity too, and we expect contact to play an important role in the decarbonisation of the energy sector and the wider economy. 
This year, we increased our efforts to promote our ESG credentials. This includes the emergence of our first annual report aligned with the integrated reporting framework as we deliver on providing more transparency on how we do business and deliver value over the longer term and beyond just financial returns. We have a good story to tell and we understand and agree with the increased expectation on all companies from investors, customers and communities to provide this information. Contact has a leading role to play in tackling climate change via tangible actions that drive good business outcomes. As we say, and as you saw on the video, change matters. This includes supporting and growing New Zealand's low carbon advantage. We do this, we need to do this, we need policy settings to support accelerated electrification of process heat and the transport and agriculture sectors away from carbon intensive fossil fuels like coal and petroleum, but without unduly burdening the economy and consumers. Here I feel compelled to make a brief comment about the pumped hydro plan set to be investigated at Lake Onslow. Whilst it is a fascinating project, we do have concerns that all, although the goal is worth pursuing, a multi-billion dollar solution from the past is high risk on several fronts, and we're not sure it will solve the problem in the best way. We only need look across the Tasman to the Snowy Hydro Project's enormous cost overruns. We believe there's much smarter technology that can potentially be harnessed in pursuit of a lower carbon economy in Aotearoa. We are concerned that Project Onslow threatens to paralyse investment in renewable energy infrastructure in the meantime, and we hope that other options identified and explored as part of the investigation are considered with an open mind. This may, be, this may well be a once in a generation opportunity to embrace the future of renewable energy in New Zealand. So let's get it right and not leap to high risk solutions grounded in the past. Elsewhere, Contact is already one of the first power companies in the world to have carbon emission targets verified by the science-based targets initiative. We have a innovative green borrowing program. This year we inked one of the first, the country's first sustainability linked loans. With the recent appointment of James Kilty as C Deputy CEO, we have also reiterated our commitment to accelerating the decarbonisation of the New Zealand economy and our intention to play a leading role in this ongoing transition. We also walk the talk by making reductions in our own carbon emissions. We can do more here and the TY smelter exit will over time expedite the retirement of thermal generation assets in the industry which will see emissions decline even further. We see geothermal generation as a huge, has a huge part to play here too. We're very proud of our team that leads the world in the development of this very low emission option. As you'll be aware, we have a world-class shovel-ready project at Tahira on hold. We believe it is a matter of when, not if, Tahira will play an important role in the New Zealand's transition to a low-carbon future. However, we must get a clearer picture of demand before we make any final decision to proceed. We're very pleased to deliver a solid financial result to investors in August. The second half of the year was in line with our expectations despite the impact of COVID-19. We had a more challenging first half of the year which was impacted by poor gas availability. Mike will update you on how things are progressing early in FY 2021. In August, the board approved a final dividend of 23 cents, thus totaling 39 cents per share annual dividend this year and in line with last year. As I have previously mentioned, we anticipate a likely period of disruption in the industry 
and we are reviewing the appropriate level of future di dividends as the status of TY and Tohara are cemented over the coming months. We will provide you with more clarity as soon as this is appropriate, but rest assured our focus on delivering sustainable long-term growth and value for our shareholders. Contact is a resilient organisation and in very good shape. Our portfolio of long life, renewable and flexible generation assets, a strong balance sheet and operational discipline provide confidence we are well placed even in a lower demand environment if it emerges with the TY exit in the near term. To finish, I'd like to thank our customers and our suppliers for the support and assistance. Thank you to Mike and the leadership team and the wider co contact Farnow for their hard work over the past year. There's always much to be done, but it is an exciting time to be at the company and for the sector. Thank you also to Vic, Eleanor, Therese, David and John for their commitment and dedication as directors. And today, a special acknowledgement to Faimutu Jews for his decade of service on the board. Fai has indicated he will stand down as a director in 2021. He has made an enormous contribution to the governance of contact since joining the board in February 2010. In the time Fai has been a director, he has provided guidance and stability as we have seen changes in leadership, both at the CEO and the chair level, and negotiating at the sell down of Origin's majority stake in contact. Fai has also been a significant contributor to the board, most recently as the chair of the Health, Safety and Environment Committee, and he has also been instrumental in guiding the board through a cultural shift across HSE and our stakeholder relationships. He has consistently challenged the management team to do better for shareholders, customers and all stakeholders. The good news is that although Fai is stepping away from his governance duties, we're very pleased he has agreed to stay on involved with contact and support the company and its relationship with iwi stakeholders for an initial period of two years. Thank you, Fai. The board is well advanced in our search for a new director and we hope to make an announcement in the not too distant future once the process concludes. And finally, thanks to you all for tuning in today and for your ongoing support as investors in Contact Energy. We appreciate your commitment to Contact's ongoing success and we appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. Namihi. Now I will hand over to Mike for an overview of the year. Tanakoto Katoa, greetings to you all and thank you for tuning in today. Rob, thank you for your kind words. That's very much appreciated. I'd like to introduce my le fellow leadership team members here with me today in this room. Um, Jackie, James, Dorian, Venner, Catherine and Jan, who unfortunately can't be here. Our team has changed and evolved this year with Jan joining in November 2019. Jackie um, being promoted to our Chief Generation Officer role in July 2020 and James moving into the new role of Deputy CEO to lead our decarbonisation and demand growth efforts. Contact is a great place to be and I'm very proud of what we have achieved in this past year. We have a fantastic, talented and resilient team throughout the company and a very supportive board. I'd like to thank everyone for making me feel so welcome and for their assistance over my first few months in the role, which were interesting, including, of course, the outgoing CEO, Dennis Barnes. The time has flown by since my first day, late February 2020. I do think, as a relative new starter, contact is guilty of hiding its light under a bushel at times. We're not that good at celebrating our successes externally, when in fact we are doing a host of very good things that more people need to understand and know about. This is a challenge I have put to the leadership team as something that we need to work on over the remainder of this year and beyond. So expect to see a little more of us getting out there and making our voice heard. This has included and will include on the ESG front, 
where we are on a journey of pursuing a range of meaningful targets and have this year produced one of the best integrated reports on the NZX. On the financial front, the year certainly threw its fair share of unique challenges our way. This included the impact of COVID-19, TY exit announcements and an unusual hydrology sequence in the Clutha River, um, where we experienced both periods of extremely low inflows and a one in 20 year flood. We also felt the impact of recent underinvestment in New Zealand's ageing gas fields and industry, as an unreliable supply of natural gas led to a sharp increase in thermal input costs. I was particularly proud of the company's response to the pandemic situations we all found ourselves in as a nation changed forever at 11.59pm on 25th March, when we went into lockdown. Throughout the lockdown, we stood up a crisis management team and continued to operate as an essential service and lifeline utility, with an unwavering focus on looking after our customers, looking after our people and doing right by New Zealand. This included extensive support for our customers, having a tough financial time in the maelstrom of uncertainty that accompanied the pandemic response, including adapting payment terms and conditions, working with social service agencies, suspending disconnections and debt collection referrals and automatically applying prompt payment discounts or foregoing late payment pe penalties. We were also heavily involved in the Electricity Retailers Association led initiative to fund 10,000 power credits worth $120 each allocated by community groups and communities to households affected by COVID-19. And we acknowledge the efforts of organisations on the front line looking after New Zealanders by providing Women's Refuge, Salvation Army and St John's with more than $400,000 of free electricity across their sites throughout New Zealand. We know the response to the pandemic and its aftermath is going to require an ongoing commitment of time, resources and perhaps most importantly kindness as we all come out of it. From an organisation perspective, through necessity we mobilised all of our people to work from home including home-based call centres within the space of days. This was so extraordinary, and frankly, it was something we never thought we could do. We looked after our people across our sites and offices across New Zealand in Tarapa, Stratford, Levin, Taupo, Fananaki, Dunedin, Clyde, Roxburgh, Auckland and Wellington. We continued to serve our customers but minimised any risk of spreading COVID-19 through meticulous continuity and crisis planning and ramped up hygiene and physical distancing. As the COVID-19 response got underway, we also reassured our 943 contact employees across New Zealand that if they needed to be home or any, for anything pandemic related, including looking after elderly relatives or to be with their kids, we would back them 100% of their salaries and not require them to take leave. It was simply the right thing to do and the feedback we received on all fronts was overwhelming. Despite all of these unusual circumstances, our high quality, long life renewable generation assets and lean, low cost retail operations combined to deliver another solid financial result for our investors, which Rob has alluded to. In FY20, contact generated revenue of 2073 million, EBITDA for 451 million, not net profit after tax of 125 million, operating free cash flow of 290 million. Our statutory profit for FY20 of 125 million was 220 million lower than FY19, but note that last year this included a $170 million gain on the sale of the rock gas business and the Aharoa gas storage facility. EBITDA from continuing operations was $54 million or 11% down on last year due to a combination of lower renewable generation, lower wholesale prices and the impact of rising costs of thermal generation and restricted gas supply. Operating free cash flow was $290 million, down 15% on FY19 due to lower operating earnings, partially offset by lower stay in business capital expenditure and interest costs. I also want to update you on how things are tracking so far in FY21. In September, we were delighted to complete the 100% acquisition of Simply Energy, a business we acquired a stake in last year. Simply is a Wellington-based company that delivers integrated energy solutions for generators, distributors, retailers, and perhaps most importantly, commercial industrial customers across New Zealand. 
Simply's value proposition is to help these customers take meaningful action, as we alluded to before in Change Matters, towards a cleaner energy future, and the efforts form a key part of Change Matters. We want Simply to continue to operate as an agile standalone company so it can stay nimble and keep innovating fast for our customers and for New Zealand. More broadly, we have been very pleasantly surprised in how strongly demand has held up, especially from large commercial and industrial customers. Given the hydrological sequence in our gas supply, we're in good shape and have made a strong start to the year, as you may have seen in this morning's October operating report. This has been supported by an excellent operational report performance with strong plant uptimes. We also have more transformation initiatives in the pipeline to change we, the way we work as a company, very fundamentally. In terms of our customer business, we now have more than 510,000 connections across electricity, gas and broadband. We now provide more than 35,000 customers in New Zealand with broadband from a standing start 18 months ago. We're continuing our transformation to become a digital first retailer and more than 100,000 customers now use our apps and website for self-service each month. We've committed money to accelerate the Lower South Island upgrades to ensure, TY, ensure that if TY leaves, that the renewable is, energy isn't stranded in the South Island. And it's very pleasing to see that Transpower has begun this work in earnest and with some urgency. We're continuing to plan for a post-TY environment. You may hear this described as a just transition or orderly exit to enable Southland, New Zealand and the electricity industry to pe prepare for a post-TY world. We remain optimistic that a fair deal will be done soon. As Rob mentioned, we have put the development of the power station on the Tahara geothermal field near Taupo on hold. The team involved in the preparation of the site and the $40 million appraisal campaign have done an absolutely outstanding job and have confirmed that Tahara is a world-class renewable geothermal project with very low associated carbon emissions. We believe Tahara remains New Zealand's cheapest and most attractive option for new renewable electricity generation and when its time comes it will deliver sustainable economic benefits and jobs in the central North Island of New Zealand. Before I finish, I do want to reiterate where we're putting our energy. Firstly, Contact wants to play a lead role in leading New Zealand to a low carbon future by developing low carbon solutions for our customers and advocating for regulatory settings that will facilitate the transition of New Zealand's energy systems away from fossil fuels. We are well underway ourselves with helping large industrial customers transition from high carbon fuels to low carbon fuels with new products and renewable substitutes based around renewable electricity and direct heat geothermal steam. We are aiming to replace one petajoule of industrial heat with electricity by 2022, or roughly the equivalent to the electricity used by all the homes in Taupo in a year. Our recent successes have included partnering with Open Country Dairy to support the installation of New Zealand's first electrode boiler at 30 megawatts at the Ararua site, and the expansion of our geothermal direct heat to connect the Nature's Famewood pallet manufacturing plant and display, displace coal usage outside of New Zealand. And you saw that on the video. We're actively pursuing other opportunities too, including electrifying further process heat applications and scoping green hydrogen production for potential use for the likes of green ammonia and urea production. We have also continued to grow our demand flexibility platform with more than 20 industrial and commercial customers now signed up to automatically reduce power consumption from equipment such as pumps, fans and compressors during high usage periods. As well as our focus on decarbonisation and demand growth, we're also underway with several other areas of strategic activity which include maintaining the flexibility and freedom to explore options around where we will invest across multiple renewable energy sources with the focus of course on geothermal. Um, simplifying how contact is set up to be more effective and efficient. Transforming our operating model and building on the experiences of COVID-19 lockdown to transform the way we work together. Being a lead energy retailer in New Zealand as we accelerate digitisation, 
consider a, more adjacent products and services and optimise our spending, and embedding our commitment to best environmental, social and governance practices across contact, which I alluded to at the beginning. Finally, I do want to thank Rob and the Board for their support over the last year. Thank you to the contact team and their leaders here today for their commitment to doing a great job, and a big thank you to our customers and suppliers. Thank you also to our neighbours. We live, work and operate in communities across this nation, and we know our actions impact on people and the environment around us. We do not pretend to be perfect, but we do every day strive to be the neighbour you'd want to have. Nami, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, we now move to a discussion of context financial statements. The FY20 financial statements were released to the market in August and are set out, set out in the integrated report, which is available on our website. Now is your opportunity to ask questions. You may have specifically on context financial statements. KPMG audit partners are present at the meeting should shareholders have any questions of them. Any questions that are of a more general nature will be covered later in the meeting. Are there any questions? Okay, there doesn't appear to be any questions at this time. So we'll move on. We now come to the formal part of the business, matters requiring resolution, which are outlined in the notice of meeting. As I mentioned, shareholders are able to cast their vote using the elect electronic voting card received when online registration was validated. To vote, you need to click Get Voting Card within the, the online meeting platform. You will also be asked to enter your shareholder or proxy number to validate. Please then mark your voting card in a way you wish to vote by clicking for, against, or abstain on the voting card. Once you've made your selection, please click submit voting on the bottom of the card to lodge your vote. Please refer to the virtual meeting online portal guide or use help, the helpline specified if you require assistance. Voting will remain open until five minutes after the conclusion of the meeting. Each resolution set out in the notice of meeting is to be considered as an ordinary resolution and as such must be approved by a simple majority of votes cast by shareholders entitled to vote and voting on the resolution. The outcome of proxy votes will be displayed for your information after voting on all the resolutions. So we now move to resolution one. Because the first resolution concerns my re-election as a director, I will vacate the chair, and Faimutu Jews will assume the position of chair of the meeting while my appointment is being considered and the resolution voted on. Kia ora, Rob. So it is my pleasure to move that Robert MacDonald be re-elected as Director of Contact. Rob was first appointed to the Contact Board in November 2015 and has been the Board Chair since 2018. And a brief biography for Rob is set out in the Notice of Meeting. The Board unanimously recommends that shareholders vote in favour of his re-election. And I'd now like to invite Rob to speak in support of his re-election. Thank you, Fai. Um, I'm excited to have the opportunity to continue my involvement in Contact Energy. I relish making a contribution to one of New Zealand's most important companies, and I'm passionate about Contact Energy's role in the future of decarbonisation of the New Zealand electricity industry. I've been a director of contact since November 2015 and was last re-elected re at the 2017 annual shareholder meeting. I'm again standing for re-election as a contact director because I believe it is an important time for the energy sector 
and an important time to ensure that we make the most of the opportunities that will emerge for contact during what will emerge as a period of disruption. I bring a dis diverse set of skills and experience to the board, having held a number of senior management roles with a focus on business, finance and strategic planning. I have over 40 years of business experience in New Zealand and overseas, including 25 years at Air New Zealand and including 14 as Chief Financial Officer. I'm a Director of Fletcher Building, AIA New Zealand and Chartered Accountants Australia and New Zealand. Also, I'm Chair of the University of Auckland Business School Advisory Board. I'm careful not to be overcommitted and have a good balance with my governance appointments. I see my role as providing contacts, CEO and leadership team with guidance, support and strategic advice. I see the chair as a bridge between the CEO and executive management and the board. I also see the chair role as the chair role to facilitate thought-provoking, robust but constructive debate and challenge between the board and the executive. It is important contact contributes to a better New Zealand and delivers value over the long term to investors and wider stakeholders. I'd say wider stakeholders because it is increasingly a requirement underpinning the ability for companies like Contact to deliver long-term shareholder value. I thank you for your continued support. Are there any questions in respect of Rob's re-election? So, question, Rob, you're the only director to hold both shares and bonds. You hold the most shares of all the directors. Will you be encouraging all directors to lift their shareholding given that contract is going to make the most of the opportunities over the next few years with disruption in the energy sector? Uh, thank you, Vi. Um, I hold those amount of shares because that's a, a personal decision um, that is uh, further than the guidance that directors are given when they join the board, which is to hold 20,000 shares. Um, and I, I don't, uh, don't mean to change that at all. Um, any investment decisions that directors make beyond what we ask as, uh, as, asked as directors is matters of their personal investment profile. Thank you. There being no further questions, would you now please complete your voting card for resolution one? Please select either for, against, or abstain. Okay, thank you, Fai. Uh, our second resolution today relates to the re-election re of another existing director. It is now my pleasure to move that Victoria Crone be re-elected as a director of contact. Victoria also joined the board in November 2015. She is a member of contact's audit and risk committee. A brief biography of, for Victoria is set out in the notice of meeting. The board unanimously recommends that shareholders vote in favour of her re-election. I'd now like to invite Victoria to say a few words before we proceed to discussion on the resolution.
Kaina tapu, kaina mana, kaina ihi, kaina wehi. Na iho monga i waina nui i a koto. No piki mai, no kaki mai, haere mai koto katua. And my name is Vic Corona, and it is my pleasure to be nominated again as a director of Contact Energy. The fourth industrial internet re revolution has well and truly arrived. So just think about things like drones, robotics, uh, autonomous vehicles, machine learning, 3D printing, new biotechnologies, you name it, it is hitting us uh, and it is interacting with other major socio-demographic uh, changes that are coming through to create the perfect storm of business change in every single industry. It means the decline of traditional industries, the rise of new industries, uh, and the acceleration of disruptive innovation. Our traditional energy sector is moving to smart grids, smart buildings, home energy management, and propelling the de decarbonisation of economies through clean technologies. So while 2020 has been one heck of a year, there is no going back, and we are adapting to a new pace of change. I bring a passion to see contact energy flourish through this revolution and bring skills and experience in the following areas if I am elected. Strategic transformation of organisations and associated investment programmes to deliver. How technology mainstreams to create new capabilities for organisations to realise and create new value. And optimising across multiple stakeholder needs, customers, shareholders and rapidly changing societal expectations. I would love the opportunity to continue to apply my experience to support Contact Energy turn this disruption and uncertainty into long-term opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Vic. I now invite discussion on the resolution. Are there any questions? So the question is, the company requires all directors to hold a minimum of 20,000 shares within three years of joining. You joined in 2015 and owned 20,500 shares. Is there any reason why you have not purchased additional shares in the past five years, given you believe in contact and you help govern, guide and determine its strategy and future? As I mentioned before, um, the uh, the board guidance is to hold 20,000 shares. Um, and in today's uh, share price, that is close to a, a full year's um, director's fees. So uh, I think um, for most New Zealand companies, my view, that would be quite sufficient. So um, it's up to you, Vic, if you want to make any further comment, but um, I'll leave it with you otherwise. Yeah, OK. Thank you. Um, Right, any other questions for Vic? Right, we have no other questions. Uh, please now complete your vote. Oh, sorry, yes. Please now complete your voting card beside resolution two. Please indicate your vote by marking either for, against, or abstain in the appropriate place on the voting card. The last resolution to, sorry. The last resolution to be considered relates to the auditor. I now move that the directors be authorised to fix the fees and expenses of the auditor. KPMG's is contacts auditor. This resolution proposes that the board be authorised to fix remuneration of the auditor, which is the conventional practice for the new. New Zealand listed companies. It reflects the fact the level of the audit workload and therefore fee may need to change from time to time to take into account the company size or complexity or changes to law. Are there any questions on this resolution? So there is a question, how long has KPMG been the auditors? Does Contact have a policy that tenders the audit work to the open market? If so, when was the last time the work was tendered? If it does not, does contact see merit in tendering for the audit work? Um, in light of, uh, so that question is um, 
quite relevant in light of what's occurring in Australia at the moment and the recommendations coming out of the a Senate inquiry there that um, that it will emerge, I think, in Australia um, that we will uh, soon, and I, I, I think there's a real possibility it may come to New Zealand as well, which um, will start to put uh, limits on uh, tenure of auditors, as they have in other countries in the world. Um, I think about, against that backdrop, it's something we will start to uh, consider as we go forward. Um, so, uh, but there's there's no plans at this point. Okay. Uh, any other questions on the auditors? Uh, the question is: Contacts governance code context governance code requires rotation of the audit partner after five years. David Gates has been KPMG audit partner for five year, uh, four or five years, and will therefore up for rotation. Who will take over his role? Um, thank you for that. Uh, and he has, uh, David has rotated out, and yes, Sonia Isaac, who is a partner in KPMG, has uh, taken over from David. Uh, next question. Recently, the Auditor General publicly stated that auditors should not be doing non assurance work that compromises independence. Contact's own governance code states their framework exists to ensure independence of external auditors. So why was KPMG selected to perform additional engagements, non-insurance, when these relate to the greenhouse gas emissions and green borrowing? Is there no one capable enough in New Zealand to do this role instead of using auditors and in particular KPMG? Um, Firstly, I'll, I'll make a comment and then I'll ask Therese Walsh if she's got any comments to make. I mean, the the work that uh, KPMG did on the greenhouse gas emissions, and it's all part of the integrated report, and it's very much assurance work. Um, and so I think we'll see that in those sort of engagements uh, become more and more prevalent as we go forward in New Zealand. Um, we are certainly a market leader with our integrated report. Um, and it's quite efficient and, I think, consistent that um, that assurance work around non-financial work is uh, done by, is, can be done by the existing auditors. Dame Therese, do you have any comments? Uh, yes, thank you, Rob. Um, uh, just a couple of comments. I think, um, firstly, the level of um, other assurance work completed by our auditors is for this financial year has been roughly 9% of the total audit fee, which in the terms of market practices is very much within the bounds of reasonableness. And I think the point that you made, which uh, I would reinforce, is that those engagements tend to be related to our more fulsome suite of integrated reporting. And so I think as we take a view of it as a company, we wish to make sure um, that the integration between all the pieces of information, both within our financial statements and our more fulsome integrated report, of which the financial statements are a part, um, that all of the connections and the broader assurance across those aspects as we develop it over the next few years relate to each other well. So um, that is part of the strategy. So I'm very comfortable at that level of 9%. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, um, I think we've got all the questions in relation to the auditors. Uh, please now complete your voting card for Resolution 3. Please indicate your vote by marking either for, against or abstain. Shareholders should now submit their votes online. Voting will be open until five minutes after the closing of the meeting. For the information of shareholders, there are proxy votes received for all three resolutions. The results of the poll will be announced on the NZX and ASX later today. We now move to general business. This is your opportunity to ask questions on anything we have not already covered. 
You can continue to provide questions online and we will address questions already submitted online. If we run short of time and are able to answer all your questions online today, we will endeavour to respond to you after the meeting. Right, the first question is, what perspective does Contact have about solar energy with regard to both solar farms and the integration of home rooftop microgrids? Grids. I think I'll throw that one to you, Mike. Right. Okay. Um, look, we're interested in all forms of renewable energy, um, and you've seen our focus at the moment is obviously the large-scale geothermal. That doesn't preclude um, investigations into solar energy in New Zealand, and indeed the integration of um, home rooftop microgrids, which are looking like an exciting development. So yes, we are interested. Yes, there are some exciting possibilities there, and we'll continue to maintain a watching brief on that. Thank you. Next question. How will the new climate change legislation affect the company? Again, I think I'll throw that to you, Mike. Um, um, it's entirely in line, well, the company strategy is entirely in line with um, all legislative changes around climate change. Our, our goal of decarbonisation, um, you'll have seen it alluded to in both the video and in the speeches, um, very much aligns with making sure that we both comply with the legislation, but also get ahead of the game and support New Zealand in its goal to be carbon neutral by 2050. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just add some comments to my... I, I think your company is incredibly well positioned um, both uh, as we stand now, where we contribute materially to the reliability of the New Zealand electricity system, but probably more than just about any other company, we can make a difference in our choices that we make going forward in respect of uh, you know, geothermal, replacing ultimately over time thermal, and the work we will do to help people uh, convert their thermal uh, usage in an industry and in agriculture. Um, next question. Um, you say that an electric boiler has been installed in a dairy factory. Do you know of any industrial processes which are cu currently cannot use electric boilers and must use coal? And as the model raised, there are some super high heat processes that require fossil fuels. But look, with innovation, um, alternative um, technical solutions will be um, developed to displace these. Steel is one obvious example where um, different anodes are being developed as we speak. So we're on a journey here. Um, electric boilers um, were highly expensive a few years ago. The fact that they are able to be installed in dairy factories now um, is just indicative of the rapid um, progress that is made, being made in this arena. And I fully expect that those, um, that, that process will continue in, across all industry um, for the foreseeable future and it provides us contact with an incredibly exciting future to play in that future. Okay, any other questions? If and when the new geothermal project goes ahead, how do you anticipate funding the project? Reserves, debt, share issue, um, that will be announced um, once we announce the, if the project is proceeding, which again comes back to whether TY is staying or going in the near term, if it's obviously going next year, that will be a moment of reflection for us. Um, if, if it is staying around longer in the medium term, then that uh, will mean that we will be able to then consider the opportunity for Tohara that will come as a complete package, um, which which uh, we would launch um, with both the investment decision, but also how we would proceed in funding it as well. Right, next question. Uh, the operating, what is the operating free cash flow? The operating free cash flow is a non-GAAP cash measure that shows the amount of cash that Contact has available to distribute to shareholders, reducing debt or reinvest in a growing business. It is calculated using operating, op operating cash flow, less stay in business capex. 
Next question. What is the view on the proposed pumped storage scheme uh, in the South Island? Um, I think in my uh, speech we gave some comments on it. The only further comments I would say is, um, and just reinforcing the comment I made, is I think there are many um, opportunities for New Zealand in the, f in the coming future. I think it's important those are explored. There's very exciting possibilities and new technologies um, that come and, and have real groundbreaking um, innovation involved and I think can pitch New Zealand into real leadership in converting its economy and its community into uh, a low carbon environment. Um, this is one potential one, but it brings with many, many quite large risks. Okay, um, next question. Is Contact Energy negotiating directly with Rio Tinto in relation to extending the date of TY point closure or is Meridian doing it on behalf of generators? Has the strong recovery in the price of aluminium since the lows of April, May led to a change in attitude? So we are not reg uh, negotiating directly with um, Rio Tinto. We are a contractor to Meridian on that, and obviously uh, we really have no idea what the attitude of Rio Tinto is uh, for that. Right, are there any other questions? There appears not. I thank you for your questions. Um, as there are no further questions, I now declare the meeting closed. Uh, thank you very much for your attendance at this contact's first fully virtual shareholder meeting and for your continued support. Thank you.